Hello guys, welcome to the new video of Excel tutorial. Today we are going to discuss MRP which is material requirement planning and how you can model it in the Excel and get output like this. So here what we can see, we can see an uh, time phased output for each item like at which week how much quantity do you need not only for the finished good but also for the raw material in order to create that finished good. You will also get at what point of time you need to raise an order in order to get these material supplies. You will also get the total number of uh, requirement against each material and you can multiply it by cost and get the budget in check that whether your budget approve this kind of material requirement so that accordingly you can keep your check and balances against your buzzer that how much you can produce so in order to create uh, this kind of uh, sheet you need to see that what are the input required basically there are four type of inputs required one is the bomb which is bill of material another is mps which is master production schedule Third is your inventory status, which is uh, on hand inventory and four is your lead time and lot size. Okay, we will talk about these in detail. So let's first talk about the bomb. So bomb is nothing. It just it is just a relationship between two entities such that we can identify that in order to produce one, how much second entities require. So in this sheet, you can check that in order to build FG1, which is finished good, you need raw material one at two quantity to produce each one FG. The same way to produce each FG, you require three quantity of RM2 and RM2 itself require four quantity of subassembly one. So this is how you can create a bill of material, which will actually calculate that in order to produce one finished code, how much other items are required. Let's move to the second requirement, which is MPS. So MPS is the master production schedule this define when and how much of each finished good you plan to produce. So basically this is a production schedule. In this production schedule, you get to know that at which week, how much quantity of the finished good you need to make. So here you can see that week one, we want to produce 100 quantity, week two only 10 quantity, week four 80 and likewise for the finished good. So the MPS is only for the finished good. Moving on to the other requirement, which is the inventory status. In the inventory status, we have two things. One, what is your on-hand inventory? And second, what is your scheduled receipt? So on-hand inventory is something which you possess physically on current day. And the scheduled receipts are the one which are in transit and scheduled to be received in the future weeks. So here you can see column B talk about the on an inventory for each of the SKU in terms of finished good, raw material and sub assemblies. Then we have a scheduled receipt of the in transit inventory for the raw material and sub assemblies. So there is no scheduled inventory for FGs as we need to produce finished good but we need to procure raw material and the sub assembly so that is why you can see that there are multiple schedule receipt move to the lead time so the lead time is the sheet which define how long each item take to produce or procure so in case of fg we are talking about the production lead time in terms of raw material and sub assembly we are talking about the procurement lead time so here let's say we can produce some item within a week so that is why it is zero but in order to procure raw material one it take two weeks in order to procure raw material two it take two weeks in order to procure sub assembly it take one week then there is a lot size so what is the lot size so lot size is something which is a minimum batch you need to order or you need to produce so in case of fg whenever you are doing a production the production should be lot for lot. So what's the lot for lot? Lot for lot is something whatever is required that quantity become a lot. So that is lot for lot. If five units are required, so that's a lot of five on that day. If 20 are required, 35 are required, 21 are required, then each quantity became a lot. So there is no fixed lot which you need to consider while producing whatever is the requirement. It's a lot for you. You need to create that much quantity only. Now comes to the minimum lot size. So what is the minimum lot? So minimum lot is something in which you need to check that whenever you are going to procure or produce, the minimum quantity should be 50 or it's multiple. So when I say if the minimum lot size is 50, 
it means whenever i am going to procure for the raw material one i need to procure at least 50 if my requirement is below 50 and if it is higher than the 50 then it should be multiple of the 50 only okay the same way raw material 2 is for lot for lot and for the sub assembly is minimum lot of 100 so whenever we are going to procure sub assembly 2 we need to raise order in the multiple of 100 and for the raw material we need to raise order in the multiple of 50 so these all are the input which are required in order to create a material requirement planning so now move on to the material requirement planning sheet in this sheet we are going to calculate what the material requirement plan so here we have some key metric which is gross requirement scheduled receipt projected on hand net requirement and material required so let us check what these metrics are so i have a description below so the gross requirement represents the total number of an item in each period so here we are seeing that in this particular period which is week one how much total quantity is required in that week so for fg we are getting this from the mps okay and then for the raw material we are utilizing the bill of material and calculating it for that week so here we are saying in the week one we require 100 quantity of fg1 okay then what we are doing here we are saying that okay in order to calculate rm1 you need to check that whatever material required for the fg1 should get multiplied by bomb c2 if i go to the bomb the c2 is something quantity per parent which is fg1 so whatever will be the net requirement here that will get multiplied by the 2 in order to get the requirement for rm1 if you can see in the week 2 it is 5 if you multiply it by 2 it will become 10 so this is how you will also analyze the demand on each week for each component like for the rm2 it need to be multiplied by 3 so 5 multiplied by 3 which is 15 and for each rm2 there are four sub assembly required so if you check this that in this week we require 194 of raw material 2 and if we multiply it by 4 we will get 776 so this is how you are going to get that what's your gross requirement is let's come to the schedule receipt so schedule receipt are confirmed incoming order or deliveries that are already planned and due in a specific future period i have talked about these schedule receipt in the inventory status sheet so we have these schedule receipt okay so this is just taking the schedule receipt into the consideration before generating the requirement so all of these you can check that they are coming from the inventory status screen now the third point which is projected on hand so the projected on hand shows the expected available inventory at the end of each period and it is calculated by adding the schedule receipt plus subtracting gross requirement from the prior periods on hand balance so here is a catch so for the first week there is no prior period so what you need to do you need to add the on hand inventory which is in this column okay so how does the calculation work here you need to check that what is your on hand inventory plus what is your schedule receipt and all of these should get subtracted by your gross requirement okay so what it is saying that here the gross requirement is 100 and your inventory is 105 so your projected on hand is 5 it means at the end of this week i will be left with 5 unit of fgs but the formula will change a bit in the next week which is week 2 now we do not have the inventory on hand we have a projected inventory from the past week so the ending on an inventory of week one is equal to the beginning on an inventory of week two so what we are doing we are adding the previous projected inventory plus this week's scheduled receipt and subtracting the gross requirement in order to check that what would have been the projected in hand so here you can see that the demand was 10 but inventory was only 5 there were no schedule received so that is why our projected on hand is in minus which is a stock out so that is why it is in red so the same formula will be applied for rm and all the only change here is 
you need to consider the scheduled receipt of RMs or the sub-assemblies and you need to consider the demand of the RM only. So here we can see that there is a requirement of FGs and we have enough inventory for the raw material in order to support it. So we might need to make change in the MPS. So the same way we also need the requirement for the raw materials here. So how we conclude this? Because of this net requirement. Then what is this net requirement? So net requirement indicates the actual quantity that must be ordered or produced in a period to prevent a stock out. So here, because we are having a stock out, so how much quantity we need to produce here is the five. So it is checking that, okay, if something is going down or below zero. So after the net requirement, you need to check that how much material I need to order. So as we know here, the lot size come into the play. So we know that for the FG1, it was lot for lot. So the quantity which is required in the net requirement tab should be the one which should get produced or procured. But in the case of RM, we know that the lot was 50. So we need to have a ceiling of 50 on that. So here we can see that the net requirement was 7, but the material required is 50. Why so? Because there was the lot size of 50. Same way you can see that in the week 7, you have 297 as a net requirement, but the material which you are requiring is 300 because of the 50 lot size. So this is how you can manage this. Even in the case of substitute, you can see the lot size roundups. So this is how you can get the requirement of the each item and your component at the week level. So now how you need to utilize this information? Now you know that at which point of time you need your item, then you need to release order to get that supply. So here the lead times come into the picture. You know that it is two week of lead time in order to procure RM1 and you need 50 RM1 in the week 6. So you need to offset that week from this week 6 in order to release the order. So if you are going to release the order on week 4, then there is a lead time of two week. So you can get it by week six. If you're going to ask it on week five, until unless you expedite the order, you won't be able to get it on week six and you cannot resolve it stock out. So this is you need to consider. So what are the complications can happen in this sheet? Right now we are considering lead time as a zero, as a production lead time. If this would have been non-zero, then we need to offset our demand. So let's say if it would have been one week. So the demand which is generating for the FGs in a week five, so we need to offset this demand by one week. It means the demand of 85, which is getting translated into 170 in the same week should be offset by one week. It means the week four demand should be the 85 multiplied by 2 which is in week 5. Why so? Because it takes one week in order to translate raw material into the finished good. And then you need to offset the procurement lead time in order to get the latest order date by which you should order this in order to get it on time. So this is how you can create your material requirement planning sheet. You can get this template sheet in the description with a very minimal price. You can suggest any other topic on which you want Excel tutorial. You can just comment below. If you like this video, kindly like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.